All right, well, I'm just gonna have to get this out of the way. This video is not going to be formatted like the rest of the videos that I usually do. Usually there'd be sick ass intros, maybe some sort of transitions and things like that. I'm not really gonna do that. I also will not have a script readily available. Maybe a few bullet points, but that's really it. This is the type of video where I just need my thoughts to just let loose because I don't really think putting it on paper and being robotic is really going to do it any justice. It won't have the same editing, there will be some in there, but don't expect it to be as grand as I usually do it. Also, I could definitely see this getting very emotional. So if you're not into that and you're more into the sort of formatting where there's good arguments and bad arguments or whatever, this probably isn't going to be the one for you. But I just wanted to preface that. If you're staying, thank you. I'm going to try to use your time very well. Now, I want to go straight into the topic, but in order to do that, let's just get the qualms out of the way first. Let's talk about this specific thing. So there's a lot of things that a lot of people can say are the reasons why platform fighters aren't doing very well, or maybe even just the fact that they should be doing this correctly. I think these reasons are fine. However, I don't really think they get into the real nitty gritty problem that I have with platform fighters. So before we get on to the big topic, let's talk about the little ones first. Graphics, roll black, <laughs> roll black? Graphics, rollback, single player, and mechanics. Now let me just preface this. Does that mean that, you know, these things don't really matter in the grand scheme of things? No, like most games, if you're lacking in a lot of these options, you're probably not going to get people in order to actually play your game. But I don't think these are the reasons why some platform fighters aren't doing so well. Like, a lot of the reason why some people talk about, like, NASB 2 being bad is usually because even though the graphics are improved, they're still not to that sort of Smash Ultimate standard. But honestly, I don't really see it. There's a lot of traditional fighters out there that don't really have the best graphics, but still have a raging community even to this day. As with rollback, I can't really consider this an option, only really because a lot of platform fighters are doing this right. Every single new platform fighter that comes out the block pretty much has to have rollback, even to have five people look at it with some sort of lust. So honestly, I wouldn't even classify that as a problem to bring up. Single player is a little interesting only because I kind of thought it was pivotal in order to have this sort of thing, but my talkings with neutral, I'll put their at, their tag and all that. Um, single player really isn't that influential for platform fighters and it kind of proves it with, especially with Nasby 2. I think the single player in that game is probably one of the best single player modes that we've gotten in the platform fighter so far. I think it needs to be improved a lot, but it's one of the best things you have, and I don't really see anyone like talking about it anymore, which is kind of a shame. I also got to think about other traditional fighters in that sense, because a lot of their single player modes are kind of just cutscenes, and nobody really cares. Like, I think a lot of people would rather them not be cutscenes and have them be a sort of interactive experience. Not in the sense of how new Mortal Kombat does its things. Uh, it would be more akin to, say, uh, the old Mortal Kombat, maybe like Armageddon. In Armageddon, sure, you have, you know, the actual fighting game that you play on people sometimes. But also sometimes you're, like, just a random person going into, like, a 3D space interacting with the world. We don't really do that anymore. I think a lot of people would like that to happen, but so far, a lot of traditional fighters are pretty much only cutscenes and only arcade mode, kind of, and then that's really it. It's, it's bad, it's terrible, but, you know, they do fine without it. So that's why I don't really give single player as much attention as I really thought I should have beforehand. Because if it was really that important, you could put that in any sort of platform fighter and it would be able to succeed. And again, I, I hate I hate picking on NASB 2 because I love that game. I, I'm going to I'm going to like pay for NASB 3 if it ever comes out. But it, it kind of proves that you can't just have a story mode and everything is just fine. Mechanics. This is uh, the biggest one, probably, because, you know. A lot of the reasons why you play any sort of different fighting game, whether it's a platform fighter or traditional anime, it doesn't really matter. 
Um, a lot of the reasons why you play those sort of games is the mechanics. Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear are not the same. That's kind of why that they are separated. You know, they have their own different reasons for playing. However, the problem is that even though that sort of player is like me, like I love mechanics a lot, pretty much the biggest reason of why you would ever play a fighting game anyway is because of the characters. You can have the most decent like gameplay in the world, and I'm pretty sure if your character drips sort of personality in their kits and their like how they talk and things like that, I'm pretty sure you can get away with being a little bit uh, bland. All right, so again, all of these things are very important, I'm pretty sure. That's why a lot of platform fighters are really trying to get these points in home, especially things like uh, combo devils, stick figures, you know, other stuff I'll put on the screen, but they're important. But I think we're not talking about the main issue. All right, finally, we've, we've, we've got to the point of the video. Here it is. One of the things that platform fighter games have to do better is emotional appeal. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer. This might seem like, oh, pff, software, I don't even know why you talked about it. This is, this is, everyone knows that, dickhead. So here's my response to that. No, they don't actually. One of the biggest problems that we have as a platform fighter genre is the fact that nobody can just stick to one game. And I don't mean it in the sense of, oh, they play too many games that aren't Smash. No, nobody in the plot, or at least a lot of people in the platform fighter genre really wants to stick to one game because they don't fucking care. Unless you are the top three platform fighters that have ever come out ever, nobody fucking cares about you. That's Smash Bros, that's Rivals of Aether, that's Brawlhalla. If you are any other platform fighter ever, nobody cares. Usually, I'd be mad about something like this, but it honestly makes sense. So, before we lose the plot, let's go over the frame of mind that I'm thinking because of this. I think there are four platform funders that we can really look at to see the reasoning as why I'm saying this. Technically, it's really only one, but I'll explain it. Give me a sec. You have Brawlhalla, you have Smash Bros, any Smash Bros, just pick it one, it doesn't matter. Rivals of Aether, anyone. We do Rivals 1, Rivals 2, it doesn't really matter. We, we already know 2 is going to do well. And multiverses. Yes, multiverses hasn't come out yet. Maybe is that. Uh, give me a sec. Since multiverses is going to come out of beta, I, I'm just gonna make the assumption that it's gonna be a game that gets a lot of hype. It's gonna retain a lot of people, and it's going to get a lot of money and whatever. So if that's not the case, then I'm a fucking idiot. But I'm gonna include it anyway. So the problem is. These two, at least Smash Bros. and Multiverses, the problem with the emotional side of it is that these characters are already characters that you know and you already have love for. So it doesn't really take a lot in order for you in order to, say, bond with them. But I'll put them right here. We'll talk about them later. Brawlhalla is also really adept because it has a lot of free play options and a lot of things from other franchises so that you could play the game. And if you like the game over and over again and you like the costume, more than likely you're just going to keep playing the game. So let's put it on that side. So basically, the only real good example that we have of a quote-unquote new platform fighter that has no really like gimmicks to when it comes to like emotional appeal is Rivals of Aether. Rivals of Aether, and the reason why it's able to actually succeed, is because it actually does the emotional support piece right. And that's something no other platform fighter, especially newer platform fighters, do very well. Yes, did it take a long time in order to get us to the point where Rivals 2 is a thing? Yes. But the problem is, is that there is no hope for any other new platform fighter that comes out simply because they don't do the same thing. All right, so what do they do well? When it comes to emotion, Rivals of Aether does this very well by giving us trailers, by giving us lore, and, and giving us a purpose and a reason to like characters. 
I know this seems very simple, but every sort of new platform fighter that goes out of bot, say, say a few that I will talk about, but most of the time, there is no reason to have an emotional connection or emotional value to the character that you play or the or or just the game that you play most of the time the only thing that a platform fighter especially newer ones really have in order to draw you in is the fact that new characters exist and that's fine but the problem is is that they don't really go deeper in the same way that rivals of aether usually does things Rivals of Aether is not just things where the characters have good gimmicks and then that's it. Guess what? There are trailers. There is lore. There is emotional. Sure, it has a single player, but the reason why the single player hits you in a sort of way and the reason why the lore hits you in a certain way is because it gets you a depth to be with these characters. Something that not a lot of platform fighters really do very well. And it's this lack of own emotional appeal for every single other game that I'm thinking about as to why we can't really grow. We can have the best graphics, the best rollback, the best single player, the best mechanics, but if we don't master the art of actually letting our um, players be involved and be in tune with these characters, then it's gonna amount to nothing. They're just gonna go back to Smash Brothers. That's because whether it's through gameplay, whether it's through trailers, whether it's through any other means, if you can give your characters emotional depth and reasons for them to be played, I'm pretty sure a lot of more people are willing to stick to playing your fighter, even if it's not the best in any of these regards, like graphics, rollback, single play, even if it's not up there when it comes to there. The emotional character that you can do within these guys are going to be the reason why people stay. And that's the problem that I'm thinking. We don't have the ability to let players actually stay because no one fucking cares about your game because it only focuses on mechanical design. Again, look at the trailers of Rivals of Aether. They may seem like they may seem like nothing now, but they're kind of the reason why people are even introduced to the characters regardless. And yes, the single player in Rivals of Aether is dookie fucking ass cheeks. I get that. Everyone says that. I understand. But here's the thing about shitty single players. Even the most shitty of single players is fine. You want to know why? Because a shitty single player will at least make you have the emotion and give you some sort of care. Like, you care about this now. Look at fucking Street Fighter V. Street Fighter V, when it comes to its graphics, considering its cutscene, considering its characters, is one of the most lambasted one of, it, of, of all time. The guy with the dreads was one of the fucking, like, characters that people wanted to be good. But guess what? It's not. But that didn't even really matter because, honestly, it having a shitty story mode, all it did was brew ideas in people's brains about what they would want in the future and make them want to care for the next one. Even the bad press probably let this game able to soar in and do more shit in the future. Platform fighters don't even do this. Unless it's like NASB2. When you have a story mode in a game, it's usually like only arcade mode. It's like little dialogue bits that like n nobody really cares for because it sounds like it's a robot. There's no emotion to it. Even if it was shitty, I'm pretty sure. Look at Garner Ban Ban. Garner Ban Ban, especially for like the first three episodes, was one of the most shit things that it's ever had ever. And I was, and I was here for it, you know? But then over time, I've grown to like it at least a little bit when it comes to lore and things like that. So that's why I come back. Was it shitty in the beginning? Yes. Did it get better? Yes. But the problem is, is that even Garden of Ban Ban does something that platform fighters don't do. And that's emit an emotion or an emotional response to the game. A game can be as shitty as it really wants to be, and it kind of doesn't matter because there will always be those people that are just that are just craving, that are just craving for it to be good or see the goodness from this. 
And guess what? That's exactly what Rivals 1 did. You know, all these cutscenes that look like ass, the little bits and pieces that people like about this and I like about the characters, so they just hope and they pray. And the characters have a little bit of lore in order to go in so that, you know, you can get into tandem and you can actually be emotionally involved in these characters. This is how Rivals 2 was born. And this is how you get people to actually start caring about your game. It gave reason for you to care, even if it wasn't just the trailer, even if it wasn't just the single player. There were still lore bits, there were still reasonings, there were still reasons why you like this sort of character that you play. Raster, fucking Zetterberg, there, there's so many reasons why a person would like these characters. In every single other platform fighter though, they don't even give them the chance. I, I love you, I love you Rostamovo, but you are literally this problem. People could talk about the graphics and, like, having MK sort of poses where they could be a lot better. I get you. Maybe the music should be better. Maybe maybe the graphics should be better. Who, I, but the problem is it's soul. A lot of the things or a lot of the reasonings as to why you would play the sort of characters are only in hints. It never actually gives you a reason. Erda just saying, don't get grabbed, it's like, that's fine. That's amazing. Can we do that more, please? Can we not have a single player mode that's just avoiding meteors and putting jars on shit in order for them to explode? Can we actually at least, I don't know, have some sort of lore in order to get people into the characters? Why is there voice acting in this game if you're not even gonna really implement it in a very good way? Look, look at the single player. The single player doesn't even give you a chance in order to bond with the character that you have, which is Seth. You, you don't even get a fucking chance. You don't see him being a dick. You don't see him, like, doing some sort of thing for somebody. You don't see him interacting with people. And I think that's the problem. The single player can be barren, and the obstacles can be, like, very simple. But if you're not gonna have a waft of creativity and a waft of personality in your character in order for me to listen to, it's not gonna matter how good you make the gameplay. Even a lot of the trailers. A lot of the trailers in Rust on Vault, you would think they would be very good and they would invest you into the characters, which they kind of do. But the problem is, is that when you try to get deeper in Rust on Vault, when you try to understand its world, when you try to get lore, you are not rewarded. What's the point of me liking this big ass fucking monster creature that fucking overwhelmingly beats angry at people if I go into it and there's nothing else to like about him, if there's no other point to his character? Again, I brought up Erda. Erda has a lot of good lines, but she doesn't interact with the characters. Hell, I can't, I can't even believe that I'm saying this, but League of Legends has done this to the up... To, uh, League of Legends has done this to the upteenth degree very well. It gives you trailers in order for you to have very good personality into your characters so that, guess what, your players can pick them. And when your characters are already beloved by people, guess what? Guess what people are going to do? They're going to buy for your skins. They're going to invest. They're going to make your product better. And in the future, you can do more and more shit. The, the, the fucking... Look at Pantheon. I had no recollection, no knowledge, no anything about Pantheon and about League of Legends in general. The only thing that I saw was the good image that was going on in the background art, right? And it was just the voice actor saying a lot of good lines to like make me feel very hyped for this character. It's very, it's very well paced. It's very good. It gives me emotion. This character, I want to play this character. And guess what? When you actually battle other sort of people in the game, there's interaction. There's people that like Pantheon, people that don't, people that like how he how he presents himself, people that don't. And there's good connection with this sort of thing. Platform fighters don't do this. I, I've talked so much shit about Mortal Kombat, but even Mortal Kombat doing its like previous scenes before you battle, do this to the upteenth degree. 
you know, you know, two players elbow each other and then they give like a little quip and piece of information about what's going on. Even that, even that is so much better than what most platform fighters do and is kind of the reason why you still have people that like your product. Mortal Kombat has been getting shit on by the community for years with bad direction in plots, with bad direction when it comes to gameplay, but guess what? It doesn't matter. You want to know why? Even them shitting on their game just proves that they have emotional ties to the game and they want it to be better. So much so, so many people, like the young snake, I, I forget I forget his name, I'll, I'll put it up in the thing, but... His content is literally just telling you about the lore, about the interactions in this game, about the, uh, about everything. And the fact that they are this disappointed enough in order to still care about your product says a lot. And it says especially a lot because, again, unless you're Smash Bros, unless you're fucking Rivals of Aether, unless you're Multiverses, nobody fucking cares. This is why I don't care about graphics, about rollback, about single player. Hell, I would usually not agree with this, but fuck it, I'm going to agree right now. I'm even going to say fuck the mechanics. If I have no way in order to actually have any sort of like connection or tie to your game or your characters, there is nothing else that you can do right. And it sucks, man. It really sucks. Because I know people are trying. And, and, they're, and they're really trying. And they're looking at what they need to do in order to succeed. And a lot of them usually get it right when it comes to the mechanical side. But then it's nothing else. And that is the problem. I think you can have shitty graphics. I think you cannot have rollback. I think the single player can even be mediocre. But if there's no reason or is or is there no emotional ties to the character, you might as well just stop because it's just going to kill you. All you're going to do is be focusing on like, oh, how can I wave dash appropriately? Oh, how can I make this mechanic be the best thing it has only for no one to care? And it sucks because it takes effort. It takes effort for you to make a character that's interesting. It takes effort for people to care. And I'm afraid that over the years of playing these games, I kind of just realized that, you know, maybe maybe the casuals aren't right about it. And we kind of focused way too much on mechanical design. And that sucks because mechanical design is pretty cool. But being so gun ho about it is kind of the reason why we can't really cement, where we really can't cement a fan base. Every single other media, even if they don't do it well, they at least produce some sort of thing to give an emotional response. And we just don't do it. Mortal Kombat, and it's and it's way in order to interact with these characters so that we can see some sort of parallels. League of Legends sowing in the seas in order to get you interested into things that you want to dive in deep a little more. Rivals of Aether in general. All of these pieces of media give you a reason to care. And I'm afraid that most, if not a lot, of platform fighters just don't do this. Let, 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 here, let's just run down the list. Frame makers. One of the big reasons that I wanted to include frame makers in the Smash Bros and the other sort of comparisons is because you already have interactions in order to get you interested in these characters. But again, like every single other platform fighter, you have these characters that, you know, you don't need a lot in order to present their personality, but there's no interaction between any of them. There's no there, there's no reason to care. Look at Slap City. Slap City did that shit well. It's single player wasn't just a single player that you play and then you're just done with. A lot of it gave emotional attachment to the characters. That's kind of the reason why I love Goddess of Explosion so much. Frame Makers doesn't do that. I understand it's not finished, but it really should have been at this point. And now it's getting more it's getting more annoying than actually just an underdog situation. 
Stardust Valkyries might not look like that they're doing a lot of this, but even they, they have little pieces of information that you can attest from the star screen. And even though it's not as adept as, say, like Mortal Kombat or like League of Legends, at least there's something to get me a little interested. I wish there was more for the lore in order to like be really invested into it, but. <sighs> Rush Summer Vault. I already got done talking with Rush Summer Vault, but just to bring it back, you know, there's there's no payoff in order to actually get invested into the game. There's no lore. There there's no League of Legends sort of sort of like character just writing their ideas down and talking to you to make them invested. There's just nothing. Multiverses even before beta did this more well than every other platform fighter because. Before, think about it, it has the Mortal Kombat thing where it's like they're interacting with the other people, they're, they have win quotes, their skins actually are talking differently, there's, there's reasons to be invested in these characters, even though they already have your money, guess what, a little sprinkle of characteristics, a little sprinkle of personality did a lot for people. Combo Devils is looking like a good game. I really hope that they bring sort of reasonings as for me to play these characters and for them to interact. <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to hold my breath. And it sucks. I don't, I don't want to be a negative Nancy about this. But this is just simple. But <sighs> it's honestly simple things that should be perfected. Look at Strive. A lot of things were taken away from that game before Strive came out. And it's one of the most impactful fighting games after Street Fighter. There was already lore that people got invested into the characters. That much is true. But they give you reasons in order for you to play the characters. There's there, there, there's dialogue when people face each other. There's There's good interactions in the story mode in order for you to have an emotional reaction. We need this. And if we don't have it, no no wonder why no one cares. It's because we don't actually give them an experience for them to at least maybe even enjoy. Or even Street Fighter V level. Even if it's that, I would at least hope that, you know, some people see that. See that it could be better and stick to the franchise anyway. Because there's some little thing about it that just wants them to keep going. Even being bad is fine because sometimes when you improve, a lot more people, guess what? They bounce back. But you can't bounce back from nothing. You can't bounce back out of not giving people a reason in order to really be emotionally attached to your games. It doesn't even have to be characters that you play in the game. Rush on Revolt can have an entirely separate character that helps you in the story mode. And like and like maybe three chapters in, he just gets bodied by someone and almost dies. It, it, even little things like that, and you just interacted and you liked his thing, and now you want to go in and fight the person that hit him. Even that little spark of emotion is the reason why people are going to come back. And we choose not to do it. I'm sorry. I, I I know, I know it's I'm sounding like a broken record, but it just it just pains me because this genre can be so much bigger than it is. Does that mean we have to do traditional fighter things and like make things even more simple than what it is to get people in? No. What I'm saying is is that what we should do instead of trying to see every single mechanic down the line and see game feel and stuff like that important things just just just, just pick up a pencil all that effort into the mechanics and how you play put some of it into your characters or interaction with characters or making your thing very interesting because we tried being better than melee and even though I agree that I would play a lot of other games other than melee Look, guys, it's it's not working. The mechanics aren't working. The just getting random characters and, and, and pretending that you don't have to do anything else is not working. Let's try something else. Because honestly, if we don't, I can't really defend people saying that we're just Smash clones.